Hi listeners, stories have so much power and so does whoever controls the narrative. It is time that we dissect and analyze these stories. I am Vipul and this is Vogue Tales. Hi everyone, enough of grim stories, what with all the crushing and devouring. This week's story is a little brighter. This Scottish folklore is about a girl who goes on an adventure to rescue her sister with a very unconventional weapon. So on that note, it's story time. A girl goes out one morning to wash her face in the morning dew, a beauty treatment handed down through the generations and never comes back. Her younger sister decides to do something about that. With a purse of her father's gold and her mother's sewing kit, plus a knife her mother thinks might come handy too, she heads off to start searching. At length, she hears tell of a wizard who lives on the gloriously named Miss Chanter Hill and has been known to abduct young women before. This missing girl's sister loses no time getting there. It is a formidable slope, but at the foot of the hill, she stops for a breather and encounters a tinker pulling along a heavily loaded cart. Taking pity on his predicament, she offers him her purse of gold to buy a horse. The grateful tinker offers a word of advice in exchange. Everything she sees and hears at the top of the hill is not to be trusted and she'd really be better off going home. She has no intention of doing that. Even the tinker, having known her for five minutes, didn't expect she would. Bidding him a courteous farewell, she continues on her way. The punishing incline forces her to take a second break halfway up, and she meets a man in such rugged clothes he is trying to pin them together with thorns. The girl gives him the pins from her mother's sewing kit. Gold and silver are a match for evil, he responds mysteriously. He also tries to dissuade her from reaching the wizard's castle and has about as much success as you'd expect. At the top of the hill stands a pair of gates. The girl knocks calmly and the wizard himself comes to open them. His countenance is visibly evil but he pretends to be polite. When the girl asks for him to hand over her sister, he tells her to come inside while he looks around. He leaves her alone and the wall abruptly catch fire, filling the air with smoke. The girl is about to run from the blaze when she remembers the tinker's advice and realizes it's all an illusion. She's barely sat down again when she hears her sister crying out for her. It's so hard not to follow. But she is sure it is another trick and binds her arm to the chair with her mother's thread to stop her chasing the voice down. Only when the sobbing subsides does she cut herself free. The wizard is startled and displeased to see her still waiting when he returns. He tells her the castle is full of maidens and she will have to pick her sister from the others. The room he leads her to has seven statues all alike, one of whom is her sister. Remembering the ragged man's advice, the girl takes her mother's silver thimble from the sewing kit and puts it on the thumb of each statue. When it turns black, she knows it is touching another illusion. When it turns silver again, does she know she's found her sister? I'll just take this one. She tells the wizard firmly and the statue is restored to flesh and blood. Seizing each other's hands, the girls make a break for it. The wizard is not prepared to lose so easily. He conjures up a huge wolf and sends it to run them down. But the younger sister spins around with a golden needle from the sewing kit, held out like a sword. 
When the wolf leaps to her throat, she stabs him between the eyes and he falls down dead. Thank you, farsighted mom. Livid with rage, the wizard flies down and pursues himself. All the girl has left to fight with is her knife, given with both parents' blessings. She throws it directly into the wizard's heart. As he falls, the castle collapses into a heap of stone and dust, and the sisters walk slowly down the hill. On the way, they meet a beautifully dressed young man, oddly adorned with pins. The wizard laid a spell on me that I'd be mending my clothes with thorns until the end of time. He tells the younger sister ruefully. But now the spell is lifted and I am a free man once more. Next they see a second young man standing beside a grand coach. You'll not be remembering me, he remarks to the younger sister and returns the purse of gold. With all the curses now lifted, the quartet climb into his coach and set off for the girl's home. This must be one hell of a road trip because by the time they get there, the older sister has fallen for the young man with the pins and the younger sister is engaged to the extinker. I don't think any happily ever after would dare fail her. The end. I'm a sucker for a tough as nails heroine. And this girl takes down her enemies with a sewing kit, rescuing her sister because she is awesome. Her mother is also awesome for recognizing that every girl on an adventure needs needles, thread, and a really sharp knife. On that note, bye for now. Let me know your thoughts on the story and our discussion by emailing me on woketalespodcast at gmail.com or through social media at woketalespodcast on Instagram and woketalespod on Twitter. And please rate, review, and like Woke Tales Podcast. And don't forget to subscribe so you can easily access our weekly stories. If you have any story recommendations or if you want to come dissect and analyze a story with me, give me a shout out on email or social media. Because whatever you do, keep dissecting and keep analyzing. <laughs>